Welcome viewers, participating guests. Thanks for joining us for the Stratford Chef School Career Webinar. Uh, you're here today because you have an interest in a creative, a creative career in the hospitality and the culinary arts. And although chef is the obvious and immediate career path, um, we're gonna introduce you to several of our graduates who have moved in many different directions within the field of hospitality, from food writer to recipe developer, sommelier to restaurateur to chef, chef instructor, entrepreneur, all as a direct result of having classical training in the culinary arts at the Stratford Chef School. We wanted to bring several experts in this field to inspire you further to explore ideas of a new career path and how the Stratford Chef School is the ideal place to begin classical culinary training. Almost all of our guests today are graduates of the Stratford Chef School. All have been associated closely with the school in some way. The discussions we have today will give you access and insights into the careers of these talented industry leaders. I'm gonna invite you to submit some questions into the chat box. We're gonna to get to that towards the end of our program with our panelists. As well today, we'll be featuring a number of student and alumni video testimonials, which I think demonstrate what the Stratford Chef School can offer and how our student body and team of chef instructors feel about the Stratford Chef School experience. Let's take a look at one of those right now. We're constantly learning so many things every day. When we sit after a service and we talk about feelings about how things went and we're supposed to talk about something we learned, like sometimes I've got like eight things I've learned and I'm all really excited about it. I myself have worked um, in every type of environment from catering to the private chef world to high volume restaurants to small fine dining restaurants. And each challenge has its own unique set of problems that you must overcome. I think part of the reason that I love the culinary industry is that I love to learn and every day I'm learning something new always. Exposing the students to these new, this new normal, this, this, these pandemic restrictions simply provides a new set of problems to overcome and gain confidence that when you walk into any type of environment, you have the skill set and the experiences to overcome the obstacles and succeed. I thought that was kind of a cool video. We have a few of those to look forward to uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, in addition to the excellent programming though at the Stratford Chef School, um, the school's location in this vibrant artistic and creative uh, community of Stratford, Ontario is the perfect setting. Known for its theater, music, culinary arts scene, this idyllic community in the heart of some of the best farmland in the province um, it, it is a very unique and interesting place to have a, a chef school located. Let's look at an alumni story told by uh, uh, Anna Carroll that I think speaks volumes to the school's unique place in the center of this agricultural community and to the culinary education that we offer here. One thing I love about this program is the combination of theory and practical, understanding the why with the how. When we put together a recipe, why do we prepare things the way that we do? Why do we put the things together the way that we do? This history informs our present actions and we cannot understand how we do the things without understanding why we do the things. It is really tiring. I think we've all been tired for the past three weeks, but it's a really good preview for our future and it's been worth it. I've never been so intrigued and impacted by everything that I'm learning. Every day is something new. New experiences, new foods, new techniques, new people. We get the opportunity to meet our producers and make the connection between the farm and our plate. Like at Churchill Farms, where we got to cook in their kitchen and meet the animals and meet our food face to face. I've met some really awesome people in this program. We all come from different backgrounds. We all come with different experience. And I think that I learn just as much from everyone around me as I do from the program itself. And the one thing that binds us all together is our love of food. And of course, we eat and we eat and we eat. It's a lot of hard work, but through it all, it's exciting and thrilling and worth it. And I am really glad I decided to take this leap into culinary school. 
It feels more right than any path I have taken. I think that's a great video. Uh, it's thoughtful, it's intentional, and I think it really conveys what the student experience can be here at Stratford. Uh, I'm excited to move into the first part of our program. Um, we're going to be speaking with four alumni who have gone in various and very interesting directions in terms of their careers, and we're going to hear their very compelling career stories and explore further some of the possibilities that a classical training can offer. I'm proud to introduce my first guest today. Uh, her career history is both dynamic and multifaceted. Welcome, Donna Bora. Hello. Hey, Donna. Donna is the lead recipe developer for HelloFresh Canada. She has a full-time recipe development role and continues to freelance at Shadow Lane Magazine. She's a former contributor to the LCBO's Food and Drink Magazine, recipe developer and recipe tester for Canadian Living, recipe developer for President's Choice Insiders Club. She's a former pastry chef. She's done so much in her career thus far. Hi, Donna. Thank you so much for being here and uh, taking the time to talk to us. Thanks, Jeffrey. Let's talk about your introduction to the Stratford Chef School, uh, where you were in your life uh, at the time that it came to your attention, and what led you to enrolling at the Stratford Chef School? Sure. Um, I actually had my first job with another panelist, Chef Carrie Rao, who's working with wine at the school beautifully. And um, I got my first job in a kitchen at Dish Cooking Studio when it was back on college. I had seen the TV show with Trish Magwood and stuff, so that really um, piqued my interest. And I had been working in a fine food shop throughout university. I was pretty much not interested in being at university, though it was very helpful. Um, and I came home back to the city every weekend uh, to work at the shop three out of the seven days a week. And it pretty much just paid for my bus fare there and back. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And then I applied to work at Dish after university was done in the summer. And I met Carrie there and I had nothing beneficial to bring to the kitchen but she welcomed me in and I learned there very quickly brunoised a lot of things made a lot of buckets of various mayos and got that was the very beginning um but I really learned a lot in that kitchen and then that's been kind of my home base throughout my food career since then I think I can't remember the year but it's been over a 10-year situation and um then when I was out of culinary school, so obviously there's that space in the middle I'll get to, but I was welcomed back by Carrie when uh, Dish had moved to College Street and I was welcomed into the cooking school program. So that was really great. Uh, but going into school uh, was decided by who I was working with. So I was originally interested in studying in New York. For some reason, that was like a magnet to me. Um, but when I went and toured all the great schools in New York, I would have been an international student. So I wasn't actually able to participate in all the factors that they provide of like staging co-op programs. And it just didn't really make sense financially or uh, academically. So I, while I was working at Dish, I said, I'm kind of discouraged. I went and toured all these schools, but I don't know what to do. Where did you guys go? And what did you think of it? And Part of it is that most of the people working at DISH at the time were people who had graduated from Stratford, but Carrie just gave me a very compelling uh, description of how intimate and one-on-one -on -one and um, active the program is. It didn't really feel like a general college program. It felt really interesting. And so I went and toured with Bob like a week later and then school started about a week after that. So uh, it was really fun. And so that's how I got to Stratford. Amazing. That's such a huge part of the story here, I think, is, is that sort of alumni connection and it branches out and a lot of our students come to us through a connection with the, uh, alumni, like meeting somebody like Carrie, who's amazing. Um, that's 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 a fantastic. That's a very common and a really, you know, it's great to have that kind of confidence with someone. Can we talk a bit about your early career kind of post graduation? Um, and then how you negotiated your way, negotiated your way into your current kind of position. So take us a little bit on your career journey. Sure. Um, so partway through first year, we had our gastronomic writer in residence. So I guess the first term was Lucy Waverman, who's based out of Toronto and is a food writer and recipe developer for many Canadian publications and a James Beard Award winner herself. Um, so she was giving us lessons about writing articles and kind of social media was pretty 
a pretty much a baby industry at the time. So we were making little YouTube videos and Instagram posts and things like that. Um, and she sort of made a broad invitation that when we had graduated from, um, from Stratford, we could come check out her test kitchen uh, in her home when we were done, we could kind of reconnect. Um, and I had hooks by that day and I said, I'm, I live in the city and I'll be back for Christmas. Could I check out your test kitchen then? And she was like, okay <laughs> all right and so i did and i was there while we were working with something with uh chef kaya and also uh james tunders who she adores um something he had made a vegan recipe for his girlfriend at the time and it was just very cute um and they had a photo shoot in the test kitchen so i stayed connected with lucy i went back to school for the spring session and then I, uh, we finished that year and I went back to work with her, but she only needed my help once a week. So I was kind of a junior, just junior baby and helping her out once a week. But I had to have other work because we had our big project that had to be based in a kitchen when we returned back to school for second year. So for that, I worked as a pastry chef in a catering company that's connected to Biblos and, oh, Patria West Lodge um, and this company is called Stories Building. They really focus on big events like TIFF events. So I got to serve a sandwich to Susan Sarandon. She liked it very much. But um, they also do weddings and really great bar mitzvahs, all kinds of things. Anyway, I was making large amounts of tiny little buns for sliders and little kulfi pops for parties and many, many, many miniature things, basically. It was a canopy focused business. Um, and so I worked there and I also would freelance where I could. So a lot of food stylists and recipe developers and food journalists all kind of overlap with one another. Uh, and there was one event that Lucy couldn't go to uh, and I, I volunteered to go. It was something launched by President's Choice with yam chops. It was some kind of like vegan tomato sushi press event. I don't know, it was very strange, but there I sat next to someone who worked at Chatelaine. So I had connected to her and we were talking about what we were up to. And then when they needed some kind of intern, uh, in addition to Emily Kitchler, another Stratford grad who's amazing, um, I was able to connect with Heather who I'd met at that event. And then I started working at Chatelaine and it really is a one-on-one -on -one small network thing. Um, so I started with shuttling gradually and then eventually someone from there moved to Canadian Living and so I went there and it's kind of just a hop around. You have to make yourself available and be flexible. And even when you don't have that skill set yet, you have to say, I'm willing to help you very readily, especially if you could teach me, I'd love to learn. Um, so that's kind of how I bopped around. So as though, although it seems sort of intimidating and large, you're saying it's really actually a fairly small group of people and those connections are integral to kind of the next steps and just be willing to accept, uh, just say yes, like I'm in and, uh, you know, move it forward that way. Amazing. Can you describe for us how your classical training at the Stratford Chef School helped you prepare for the successes that you've enjoyed throughout uh, your career so far? Yes. Um... I found it really helpful for when you were trying something new, especially if you were saying, I, you know, I haven't worked in this industry before, but I'd love to try. They didn't have to teach you very much. You were kind of ready to go, especially if they had some kind of specialty thing, you might have learned about it in gastronomy, or you might have learned about it while writing your specs about squid stir fries. So you had all these like different cuts you could do for the food stylist. That's not something that you could usually count on for someone who's never worked in an a certain part of an industry before to provide with confidence. So because we had lots of different niches that we had covered in school, I was able to do random things pretty comfortably and just kind of feel comfortable approaching new people and say, I'd love to try because we had so much behind our, our skills. Right. So don't it's an it's it's an environment where don't, don't be afraid there. You know, it's a small student population. Be, be, be encouraged to, you know, experiment and try your own stuff and move your move your own way with guidance. Yes. And something else there, I remember um, when Richmond Station had done their dinners at the school, there were a lot of students who expressed interest in going to the restaurant to stage, whether it was over Christmas or afterwards but then they didn't follow through. And I remember the year after Chef Carl said, um, 
you know, I had talked to a bunch of you last year and I know you were excited to come, but then you didn't call. Like Donna called me and said, can I come in? And then of course we say yes, but we're not gonna kind of try to court you. We're sort of presenting you an opportunity and then you have to come to us. So with the school, especially because you get to meet all the guest chefs, whether you're washing the dishes as a first year or something, you have to then follow through on the opportunity and ask, just kind of invite yourself and see if they say yes and if you can show up. Yeah, that's just good advice in life, right? Like just set a path, follow a course. Don't be afraid to, you know, say hi to your person next to you as you described it, making those inroads. And uh, uh, yeah, just move yourself, keep moving forward. Thanks for being here, Donna. I really appreciate it. Great story. Uh, all the best to you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Oh, thanks, Jeffy. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Such a great story. So many cool little... Uh, uh, connections to be made uh, here and just, you know, throughout uh, the, uh, as you move through a career. Um, I'm very excited to introduce my next guests, uh, Simon Briggs and Anna Morano. Hi, Simon and Anna. I got you both today. I was, uh, I, there, was a, we were, there was a fear that maybe we were going to have one or the other and which would have been great, but having the two of you is... We came yes. from work. We're all good. Simon and Anna met at the Stratford Chef School, I do believe. They are both graduates, and Simon is a former instructor here. Uh, they spent many years working in the Stratford culinary scene. I had the pleasure of working with both Simon and Anna in Stratford. Um, they've recently, in the middle of the pandemic, taken a very entrepreneurial turn, and they opened their own bakery, the Panataria Bakery in Amherstburg. Welcome, Simon and Anna. Thanks for taking the time for your, from your new business to come and spend some time with us this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. it's our pleasure. Um, let's talk a bit about, first of all, your exciting new business venture. What is it? How did you get involved in it? Um, well, uh, it's our little artisan bakery and we hand make fresh loaves and pastries and all that type of thing. All the, all the things we would have learned at the chef school. And, uh, it was interesting when we built our model because it was in the midst of a pandemic. So we had to think about how that worked, uh, and how could we stay open? So we made it takeout only. And so far the community has been amazing and coming out and supporting us and supporting local is a huge thing in this area as it is for so many others, but our community has been great and yeah. Amazing. I think you've, I know we've seen that model a few places here in Stratford of people who've started, uh, you know, uh, a little restaurant hospitality businesses where the model is takeaway. Um, I can, one, one of the girls, um, uh, Kelly Ballantyne, who owns Circle here in Stratford, she's changed her model entirely. And I asked her, uh, I was like, do you have any intention of moving it back? She's like, not at all. This is working great. Uh, it's just, it's satisfying. It's giving her a better life balance. Um, and just turning things a, a little bit in a way that maybe you wouldn't have thought of. Um, that's amazing. Uh, this business is something that you guys have always been thinking about, dreaming about for a long time. Congratulations on taking the step. Um, how did your classical training at the school uh, help you succeed, not only in just launching your new uh, um, venue, your venture, uh, but moving you through your respective careers uh, up until this kind of moment? I think the training, because um, you learn so many things at the chef school, um, it really does sort of guide you in the right direction in order to set up and, and uh, mm -hmm. picture um, a business. Uh, for me, what I took most, especially from the training, was the design classes um, in order to make this venture work. You have to have a clear vision of what you want to do, um, not only from the food point of view, but also from the design point of view as well. And obviously the food is very important, but they both come hand in hand. You have to have a clear vision. And I think that's what the Stratford Chef School definitely gave me. I mean, I've had so many ideas you know, throughout my career of what I want to do and what I want to open, but ultimately it really does give you uh, a push in the right direction on how to go about picturing your vision and uh sure. yeah i took a lot from uh from that especially the design element of the school it's not just about food it's about becoming a restaurateur becoming an entrepreneur and ultimately designing your your goal your vision mm -hmm. and uh 
That's what, I think that's what I took most out of the school, to be honest with you. Yeah. And that's a fun project as well, right? Yeah. I mean, I just, I marked a few of those uh, many years ago. I was in on that and I just, I really enjoy the ideas and the kind of creative expressions and uh, things that you'd never think about that I thought were, you know, some of them still stick with me today. So um, that's amazing. And it's amazing that you were able to use that uh, and turn that into what you're currently doing. Finally, why, why did you choose the Stratford Chef School uh, to do your training? And what do you think set Stratford apart from other schools? Uh, and maybe Simon, you can speak to it from your experience also as an instructor there. Um, just kind of what are both of your observations about it? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I did the university thing. I got, a, you know, I got a degree, I pursued higher education. I got a desk job that was nine to five. And I hated it. I hated everything about it because I like working with my hands and I like being creative. So I was young enough where I knew I could go back to school and think about something else and getting on in my age where I needed to get my stuff together. So I decided to think about what were the things that I loved and I love food. I can talk about it, read about it all day. So I decided to go back to school to become a chef. And I knew that I had always wanted to open my own business, but I wasn't always sure what that looked like or how I'd get there. So when I was thinking about schools, I landed on the Stratford Chef School because it was, to reiterate what you said, it really does sort of give you the hands-on culinary training, but also those entrepreneurship skills. You know, I can do my own restaurant design. I can make a business plan and learn how to do that. And that really paralleled well with what I had already taken in university as well. So, uh, and I think another thing that the school really does well is its intimate setting. You know, I'm not, you know, student number 47B. I, I am in an intimate group with one instructor every day and I get to ask them questions and work side by side. And, that sort of family oriented environment really helps you learn and absorb. Amazing. Yeah, I think I was, I mean, I, I'd been in the game for about, I don't know, 12 years before I went to the, the chef school. Um, and I was at a time in my sort of career where it was like, if I don't get proper training, I'm going nowhere in this industry. So I went to the chef school because I love the, the, the intimacy, like Anna said it's it's very compact they cram uh, a lot into the 16 weeks of both term of uh, both years and i liked the idea of being at a school that only did cooking i didn't want to be surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of students doing other courses you know i wasn't interested in someone who was doing i don't know sports and rec for example i just wanted to be focused around people that were doing uh, culinary arts and um, I think the school is unique because you have that intimate setting you have these small classrooms or small kitchens and it is the real deal that is what kitchen life is like when you go to the chef school and that's what I wanted um, as an instructor I felt the same way um, I always sort of said to myself that um, if you can make it through these 16 weeks and you understand the uh, 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 the, the model of the school and you can huff it in this kitchen, you can huff it in any kitchen. And that's what I think made it very unique. And it, as a student and also as an instructor, I, 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 I found it very valuable being um, in a small intimate setting. It's, it's very, very worthwhile, I think. It's you, like Anna said, you're not just a number, you're not sitting in an auditorium making notes, you're actually you're in the trenches, so to speak, and it's by far one of the best ways to best ways to learn. Yeah, yeah those yeah. those are both common common kind of I think extractions from people who have come to the school and alumni and uh, uh, and often also you know in a coming from other careers or coming from uh, a lot of people like well my folks wanted me to be an accountant so I did that but I don't I don't love that um, and this is a, I think a great creative option um, and as you two can attest and and speak to uh, follow your heart follow your passion um, don't be afraid to make the decision to change and uh, uh, to go somewhere um, that, that 
you know, as you say, uh, the, the, the quality of the experience here is, I think, uh, exceptional. So thanks for being here, you guys. I really appreciate taking the time on a Sunday out of your busy lives. Good luck with uh, your bakery. We'll be down in the summer to, uh, to see you and all the best. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. We had a really unique experience, uh, opportunity uh, this past November to have Bob Bloomer with us uh, as our writer in residence for two weeks. Donna talked a little bit about the writer in residence program that she was sort of taken by with Lucy Waverman. Uh, that's a program we offer every year where we have a food writer, uh, recipe developer, someone who can speak to food writing communications, which is very important in the business. Um, so uh, uh, this year we had Bob Bloomer. So if you're not familiar with Bob, he uh, ha was a fixture on the Food Network um, during the 2000s uh, with a, a, a number of television shows on the Food Network, um, such shows as the Surreal Gourmet. You might remember that with the kind of Airstream trailer with the toast coming out of it, uh, Superstar Chef Challenge, uh, World's Weirdest Restaurants, Glutton for Punishment, He's written numerous cookbooks. Uh, he's been in the music business. He's a uh, fine artist. Uh, he's just an all around creative, fun and thoughtful guy. And I had a chance to hang out with him while he was here a little bit. Um, I got to ask Bob about uh, his career, about what he calls his uh, off the Eaton path career. And uh, if he could do it again, did he think that he would have benefited from classical training uh, like you would receive here at the Stratford Chef School? I did film it on my iPhone. He was very generous with his time, but uh, you may have to adjust the sound. Let's hear from Bob. In my 30 year career in the food world, I've done everything from create and host television shows along with being a producer on those shows written some cookbooks. Heck, I've even broken a few food-related Guinness World Records. Uh, but it's a really valid question to wonder if those opportunities that I've experienced over the last 30 years still exist now. And certainly the pandemic has shaken things up and it's a whole new world. But the truth is that everybody on the planet eats three meals a day. And sure, they may cook some at home, but there's still an awful lot of food that needs to be prepared. Uh, people are still watching TV shows, be they on television or on, uh, you know, through social media, on the internet. And I, so I think that the experiences still exist and the opportunities, they've just changed and they're still constantly in flux. But as long as people continue to eat three meals a day and have an interest in food, there are always going to be opportunities. I've been so fortunate. I've, I've worked in the music business. Uh, I do a lot of fine artwork. I uh, have worked in the culinary arts, so to speak, uh, cooking, even though I've never been a chef. And uh, I've been able to travel the world doing all these things. I mean, basically I've had the career that your guidance counselor would never tell you about. And probably the one your parents didn't want you to embark on. But the truth is, it has been the most gratifying life that I could have ever imagined. And uh, and that's because I've, I've taken the road less traveled. Uh, I've gone and wandered off the Eaton path. And uh, I've never had a safety net, but it always seems to have worked out. And so if I was to give any advice to anybody who was starting off in a, a similar vein and, and hoping to uh, have a career in the food world, not even necessarily as a chef, I would say, just go for it. And if there's any one thing I've really discovered, it's that sometimes you don't find your career, your career finds you. I can easily be the poster child for the fake it till you make it movement. Uh, because I've really, I've just fumbled my way through my career. And I have absolutely no regrets. But, if I could do it all over again, I think that my career in the food world would have benefited from the anchor of an experience like coming to the Stratford Chef School uh, and, and going through the entire program.
That was nice to hear from Bob. He was really fun to have around here. And, uh, you know, he had spoken about wanting to be uh, uh, kind of associated with the school on a kind of an ongoing basis. So I think that would be great. Uh, speaking of interesting career paths, I, I'm very excited to be to be able to introduce to you another Stratford Chef School graduate, uh, Mr. Mel Athulath Budali. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Mel. Uh, after a 20 plus year career as flight director with Air Transat, Mel came to his second career in the culinary arts by pursuing his lifelong love of food and hospitality, which led him then into his third career and uh, his fourth career as a teacher. Uh, you'll get the picture pretty soon. Uh, hi, Mel. Thank you so much for being here and uh, giving some of your time today. Hi, Jeff. Thanks. It's great to be here. Thank I'm you. Uh, great. Happy to see so many familiar faces on the panel. Yeah, it's excellent. You've had such a compelling story. Uh, and you've built such an interesting uh, and creative set of careers. Uh, there's more than one. Uh, and you tell your story so well. I'd like to start by connecting some of those dots as a lead up for viewers, um, and then move kind of through your decisions to scratch that culinary itch and apply at the Stratford Chef School and how things unfolded uh, kind of beyond. But by the way, I should just mention, Mel, that you decided to pursue this career and to start your uh, culinary school uh, at the age of 40, which I think makes the story even more inspiring to people. Uh, I was actually, I think, 46. Okay. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> um, I think it was a, around there anyway. <laughs> um, so just to give you a little bit of background into, into my past and where I took the path that I, that I took, or how I took the path that I took, um, I came from, I come from a family of people who are extremely interested in food and are very much into trying anything once. Both my parents, I, I grew up cooking with both my parents, cooking um, every kind of food imaginable. Uh, we, I think I had my first, and this is, you know, in the, in the mid seventies, I think I had my first piece of sushi when I was maybe five or six years old. So like 1973 or 74. Um, and, and one of my favorite memories is my father used to, uh, when he discovered Cajun cooking, Whenever uh, he used to burn something, he would tell us it was Cajun, so just shut up and eat it. Um, but so I came from that kind of world, and my parents bought a restaurant when we were when I was in my late teens, and I worked in the restaurant there. And I'd always sort of grown up working in hospitality and working both front and back of house, and it was sort of my fallback when I needed to make money. And I had always, always, always been interested in food, and then I got this job at. Uh, Transat. I had several careers before that, as you could probably guess. Um, and then when I started at Transat, I kind of put the food thing in the back burner and then developed, spent the next 20, 25 years developing my ability to um, deal with people and uh, people that are stuck in a small tin can 30,000 feet in the air and flying through space at 900 kilometers an hour. So really stressful situations didn't bother me. And um, I think there was a point when I was living in Vancouver. Oh, the other part of the other part of that equation is I also, uh, through Transat, through that um, opportunity that I had with them, and also because of my parents and their amazing uh, gift to us uh, as kids of travel, I had that itch and that and and no fear about going anywhere in the world. Um, so I was able to live in very different places and travel all over the place. Um, and through that travel, I started to really more explore my interest in food. And I was given that opportunity to, to you know, do a lot, of, a lot of cooking and a lot of shopping and a lot of talking to chefs in places like Greece and Italy and France and Spain and England and Japan and pretty much everywhere. And then there was a point when I was living in Vancouver and I thought, I think I want to explore this further. And I started looking at culinary schools and looking at going to culinary school and talking to friends of mine who had gone. And, and as you've heard from other people before, I think that the, <clears throat> the big thing that attracted me to the chef school was the intimacy of the program and the fact that the program was, was really practical, but it also didn't just concentrate on cooking. It concentrated on on the history and the management style and design, as Simon said, and, and everything that went along with being a good cook, but also everything that went along with being able to run a good business. And that's part of what attracted me most to Stratford, um, as well as the uh, 
the amazing people that I had seen come out of it. It just seemed like it was a, a in a league of its own. Yeah, I mean that that's that's kind of, that's that also is a, a story that we hear a lot from alumni and graduates, and then you become part of this kind of uh, it, it, uh, league, this alumni group, uh, having this incredible training and these skills. How did your classical training at Stratford um, and your experience there? Uh, um, how did you take those next career steps, moving out beyond Air Transat with that training, to build on what was already an incredibly ses- a successful career? Uh, well, so shortly after I graduated from, tra- or while I was actually, while I was in, um, in chef school, so the summer between first and second year, as Donna said, we had to do a, a sort of a work study uh, project, a huge restaurant project. And I uh, approached a friend of mine who owned um, quite a well-known restaurant here in the Hamilton area uh, called Quatrefoil and asked if I could work for them for the summer. So I worked for him and he actually remarked on how how well I just sort of slipped into the into the uh, the role of the professional kitchen, and I and that is in due part mostly in due, due to the uh, the training that I had at Stratford. But then once I finished that, I, I kind of thought I'm not a hundred percent. And I was also, you know, keep in mind at this point I'm now I think 48, closing in on 50, and I was like I don't want to start out in the in a in the restaurant industry and you know, kind of go that route. Um, and then a friend of mine approached me and asked if I would um, do a couple of fundraising dinners for his school and work with the kids. And I, as my instructors will be able to tell you, I have a lot of what I call Jeopardy knowledge in here about food. And and and, and I really like sharing it. <laughs> um, and to have, the first time I stepped in front of this group of you know, grade seven, eight, nine kids, I sort of thought, oh no, they're going to see that I can, that I'm totally faking it. They're just, they're not going to be able to, they're going to be able to see right through me. Um, but then what happened was I, I sort of channeled um, the great instructors that I had at Stratford. And I just kind of, I pulled stuff that, that they, that I, I used them as my inspiration. And I used my technique training as my classes. So what I really did was imparted the stuff that I had learned at Stratford into the, you know, into the classroom with these grade seven, eights and nines. And it was amazing to watch and, and to do because these kids responded so well. And then, so after I did that a few times, uh, they approached me to actually teach full time. And so this year I got my uh, Montessori certification. So I'm a certified Montessori teacher, which is again, now another career. <laughs> and um, and I now teach full time at this Montessori school, and it is so amazing to me that I get to do something I love every day, uh, and and watch these kids absorb that knowledge, and and it and it just it's so gratifying to know that that I have the base that I got from Stratford, and I call on my Stratford experiences every day. Um, you know, examples of of that examples of what my instructors taught me and what they said to me and Simon and Randy are both former instructors of mine and and I learned so much from both of them as well as from everybody else but yeah I I just I I felt it feel that that classic training because it's so well-rounded it just it gives you a really really broad base of knowledge and that's how I used my my broad base of knowledge it's such a great story, Mel. I just, I just love it, and, and that you, you know, you've done so many things and so many creative things, and it, it's just, it's just so inspiring. It makes me want to go out and do like so many things. Lastly, let me let me ask you, what advice would you give people who might be thinking about making a career change or scratching that same itch that you you scratch, taking a chance in a new direction, specifically maybe in hospitality or culinary arts? Well. I am the walking, talking, living example of it's never too late to, to decide what you want to do. And when you grow up, um, I decide pretty much every five years what I want to do when I grow up and change. Um, and I think that if you're open, uh, if you're open to new experiences, if you take that leap and decide to, to, to go into something, you go into something completely uh, foreign to you. Just be just be a sponge. Absorb everything you can from everybody you can, and don't discount anyone's knowledge. Anyone who wants to give you any kind of 
information or advice. Um, I, to this day, am the, the, the most appreciative of asking anyone. I don't care if they're younger, older, more or less experienced than me. Anyone who has a piece of advice to give me, I take. Um, that's what I would say to everybody. You know, take, take the advice, take where it comes and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, you know, walk off the edge of that cliff because, you know, you never know what's going to be waiting for you on your way down or on your way up. You know, it's, it's, it's a great feeling to, to just follow your passion and do something you love. Um, yeah. And uh, just for your information, I'm starting a sixth career in about three months. <laughs> are you, you going to tell us about it? Uh, not yet. I think okay. Well, be, next, next, next time. It'll be a really interesting, fun departure for me. But it's next, next time I will, I will tell you all about it. Amazing. Such great advice, Mel. So great to see you. Thanks for sharing your time today and your amazing story. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Jeff. It was great to be here. Thank you. See you soon. Yeah. Great story. So good. All of those stories are great. Uh, we're about to get to our panel discussion, which is our second part of our program, which is great. I'm going to encourage viewers again, put some questions into the, I think there's a Q&A box as well as the chat box. If you have any questions at all, don't be afraid to put those in there. We'll get to, uh, we'll get to them as many as we can for sure. Um, I think let's just one more have one more look at some of the student and chef instructor testimonials. Um, uh, we're going to get a further look into life at Stratford Chef School, some of the many things that sets uh, Stratford Chef School apart from other programs like we've heard already from our guests. Let's take a look. Um, I came in Stratford Chef School because uh, I worked in a restaurant before and I've always been interested in cooking. Like, uh, I was always a home cook, but when I worked in a restaurant, my head chef was a graduate of the Stratford Chef School, and she really kind of inspired me, and she was a great example of what I would like to become one day as a chef. Uh, what sets the school apart from other culinary institutions is our uh, small teacher to student ratio. Um, we often have a, a very few students in the class, and they get a lot of personal time with the instructors. Um, what else sets us apart is that the, the majority of the, the teaching staff, um, as well as the other staff, the, uh, the theory instructors, um, are all industry professionals. We all have other, other careers, other jobs outside of just teaching, um, so we remain up to date on uh, industry. After my first career that lasted about 30 years, um, I had some time and some a bit more energy left in me to try something that I've always had in the back of my mind. Level up one is blowing my mind um, and blowing my mind in a really good way. Um, I'm learning so much. Uh, we have a variety of, of students who come to the chef school and who all succeed. Uh, we have young people who have never worked in restaurants before who are coming for some cooking experience who, who graduate um, and are almost ready to become chefs on their own. Uh, we have career changes folks who are coming in uh, after leaving a, a second career or a first career. I think it's getting out of my comfort zone and, and I think that's the biggest highlight for me. Doing things I've never done before, I've never worked in a professional kitchen, so this is an opportunity for me just to do some things that I'm just not quite comfortable with and sort of expanding my mindset. keep coming back to the idea of possibilities today. I think that's kind of, if there's a theme today, uh, I think that's what, what, what it is. What kinds of opportunities are open to you if you pursue a, uh, a classical culinary training at Stratford Chef School? This is something we're going to explore further uh, in our discussion with our panel today. We are incredibly fortunate to be joined by six industry leading professionals. Uh, many are Stratford Chef School graduates. All have had an intimate connection to the Stratford Chef School. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing them all, of working with many. Uh, I'd like to welcome today, uh, here's our panel. Uh, first, I'll introduce Amanda Bradley. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Jeff. Man is a former service instructor at the Stratford Chef School. She's traveled uh, the world and trained at uh, many Michelin star restaurants. She is the co-creator of Allo Restaurant in Toronto and currently the co-founder, co-owner of Vela Restaurant in Toronto. Thanks for being with us, Amanda. Thank you for having me. Next is Ryan Donovan. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Jeff. 
Brian's a Stratford Chef School graduate. He is the co-owner of Richmond Station in Toronto, along with his business partner, Carl Heinrich, who is also a Stratford Chef School graduate. Brian's a former board member. He currently sits in advisory capacity here at the school. He's just an all-around champion of all things Stratford Chef School. Thanks for being here, Ryan. Yeah, pleasure. It's nice to see everybody. Next, we are uh, uh, going to introduce Carrie Rao. Hi, Carrie. Hello. Carrie's a longtime friend. She's a graduate of the Stratford Chef School. She's a professional chef, a recipe developer, a sommelier. She is a co-founder of uh, Inequity in Toronto, which is a group of amazing people who are dedicated to the idea of equity and inclusion in the wine industry in Canada, specifically speaking to the BIPOC and the LGBTQ plus community. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Randy Redner. Hi, Randy. Randy is a graduate of the Stratford Chef School. She has been a working professional chef for many years, uh, most recently at the Prune Restaurant here in Stratford, Ontario. Uh, Randy is current head of program development here at the Stratford Chef School. Very important role. I couldn't think of a better person suited for that role here at the school. Welcome, Randy. Thank you. Next is Eric Robertson. Hi, everyone. Hey, Eric. Eric's a graduate of the Stratford Chef School. He has traveled the world working in many of the finest Michelin starred restaurants. He has settled in the Niagara region to co-found and be the head chef of the restaurant Pearl Morissette. Thanks for being with us, Eric. Pleasure to be here. Last but certainly not least is Jordan Mazanti. Hey, Jordan. Hi, everyone. Hey, Jeff. Jordan has worked all over the world in hospitality as well. He is currently the head sommelier at the distinguished uh, Relay and Chateau uh, Hotel Langdon Hall in Cambridge, Ontario. Uh, Jordan is the wine instructor here at the Stratford Chef School. And he's also part of a really amazing group of people who developed the SOM app, S-O-M-M, -M, during the pandemic. Uh, it's available for download at the App Store and on the Android Store. If you're interested in wine, I'd say download it and check it out. Welcome, Jordan. Thanks for having me. This is great. In here. I'd like to begin the discussion today, everybody, um, by talking about something that uh, COVID seems to have brought to the forefront of our industry. And I think we can all agree that this needed to happen. Um, but it's the idea of equity, both from a pay standpoint, uh, from a labor standpoint, from a gender perspective. Um, I know, Amanda, you're doing interesting and progressive things with wages at Bella. Ryan, you have been doing that as well. Uh, Carrie with Vinequity. You're all experiencing it firsthand. Can we talk about the positives that you see coming to the industry post COVID and what the next generation of hospitality professionals can expect? Amanda, do you wanna start the dialogue and then just chime in everybody? Sure, I think you, you kind of started by saying that it needed to happen. And I think what needed to happen is just basically addressing, having the conversation and not being in the sort of clouds anymore of the fact that there has been a long standing time of, um, you know, pay pay structure specifically in hospitality has been a bit wonky for quite some time, and it's it's great that now it's coming to the forefront forefront for a lot of um, hospitality people to address the fact that you know the difference in structures and that it's not just doesn't just need to be you know front of house is being paid uh, less than minimum wage or serving minimum wage plus gratuities while the kitchen staff, for an example, um, typically don't make any of the gratuities, you know? So then there's the solicitation of tips, which I'm sure Ryan can speak to as well, because I know Richmond Station, um, they've, ch they've changed that structure as well. Yeah, at our shop, we've uh, eliminated gratuities altogether. It's been about 20 months or so. We, we started this project, um, I wanna say right at the beginning of the pandemic, but it's actually four or five years of, of, of hard work behind the scenes altogether. Um, yeah, I, you know, Jeff, just to your comment too, I think now's the, now's the right time for all the change. The change is happening anyways. Uh, it doesn't surprise me when I look around at the panel here, Carrie, Eric, Amanda, you know, it, now's the time to do the, the really hard work and make those changes and continue to see Stratford grads in the news and at the forefront sort of spearheading those changes. Um, you know, and I think that's a testament to the education at the school, uh, f for sure, and the leadership that's there. Uh, it's a really comprehensive education that you get at the Stratford Chef School. And so you graduate from the school with nothing but hours of hard work ahead of you with your head down and your knife sharp, chopping chives and, and making your way through your education. And then eight or 10 years later, you find out you're the person 
signing paychecks and paying their rents. And, and it's time to look around and say, well, the inequities that were there that I had a really no opportunity to change when I was a garde manger cook, should they exist in my space now that I'm not the garde manger cook? And, um, you know, every entrepreneur is going to answer that question differently, even if they get around to asking it. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud to say that Stratford grads continue to ask themselves those, those questions, first of all, but then, um, you know, answer with really strong values, which is nice to see. Carrie, do you have anything to add? Um, I think from my point of view, what I find with equity is more uh, or less like the difference between back of house and front of house, not so much pay structure. Um, but seeing that, you know, where there are a lot of BIPOC people in back of house, and I see, I would really like that to change and move forward. And I think we're seeing that that uh, restaurants are becoming a bit more open and there's definitely a uh, different, you know, people are pursuing front of house. I think they're, I think a lot of BIPOC people didn't always feel that there was a space for them and to see a lot of representation, especially in like a, a city like Toronto is really great. Uh, working for Amanda this summer, actually at Bella, uh, what I love the most about seeing that and also the training around DEI and uh, anti-oppression uh, even before we started was excellent. And to see the ratio of BIPOC people spread out throughout the restaurants what was absolutely incredible. So there is a big change with that. Um, and I, I'm coming mostly now, like less from cooking, but more from wine, because you definitely see that in, in you know, inequity in the wine industry. Um, but uh, I think it translates across everything, so. Eric, how are you seeing this kind of play out at, uh, where you are? Uh, for us, like a lot of the changes were kind of, we've really seen a different um, kind of side of it because for us, when we opened Restaurant Pormore, so we didn't have tipping. We always went for a salaried front of house as well as back of house to kind of eliminate those boundaries or kind of differences right away. Um, we've always offered uh, kind of different compensation plans between our uh, shared RRSPs as well as uh, Kind of benefits and everything like that to kind of create that safety net for our employees and then really what happened was once the pandemic hit we really saw that kind of really come to the forefront of the conversation both on social media and just with different interviews and conversations with peers as well too is like you know our um our service staff was protected by being on a salaried rate rather than kind of going through um you know the the kind of tipping machine which is uh you know really needs to be taken away and then uh you know we we kind of went from there and then we you know it became a little bit more acceptable where we really had a hard time kind of finding front of house staff people were kind of seeing that change and coming towards us a little bit more with that conversation like hey this is a place is you know safe in that regard and and you know there's a lot of changes still that to, uh, need to be made both in on our side as well as you know the greater industry but uh you know it's kind of just i'm really happy to see these the pandemic, although very sil thin silver lining on this, uh, really kind of helped these conversations come out and, you know, being able to talk about these. Right. Randy, how are you seeing that in your professional career as a chef? How do you, so, I'm sorry, how do you mean? Well, I, I mean, I, 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 as opposed to sort of your leadership role at the school, um, I'm just kind of talking about within the industry. I'll, I've got a couple of questions for you about the school as we move through it, but um, where you are in, in your position, uh, or where last year at the, at the Prune restaurant, um, is, the, uh, uh, is, is that being addressed, do you think, on the kind of the front lines, um, or are you, are, even if it's not, maybe, are, are you having any success at um, introducing, listening to these kinds of stories and, and uh, thinking, thinking about it. I think everyone's thinking about it. Uh, I would say that uh, Bill and Shelley Windsor, the people that own the Prune, they own Mercer Hall as well as uh, York Street Kitchen. They're very, very interested in creating a place that people want to go work at. And whether that's um, equitable, wage distribution between the front of house and back of house, or whether it's benefits, um, perks, this, that, and the other thing, their interests, they're very, very cognizant of how dangerous and harmful this industry can be, and they want to create an alternative. Right. 
Great. Um, and so that's certainly part of the, uh, both Mike and I are going back to the prune this season and that's certainly part of our conversation leading up to this 2022 season. Jordan, how are you seeing anything on the front lines? In a, like you, you work in a fairly large organization, a relay at Chateau property at Langdon Hall. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, first off, I, I like that all of this conversation is happening. Um, I felt like, you know, the restaurant industry as a whole was kind of, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, has always been a little bit behind in, in the past. And I find that, you know, whether it was COVID that accelerated all this conversation or not, um, these are all positive things that are now um, getting brought to the forefront. Like Amanda said, at least the conversation's happening. Like we know uh, where the problems are um, and, and things are starting to change uh, for the better all over the place. And I think I think that's great just to get the conversation going is 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 wonderful. And the conversations uh, I find are happening in, in the restaurant um, with all these topics uh, and they're things that didn't always happen. Like I had never heard them prior to the last couple of years. So I think this is all positive uh, moving forward. Yeah, no, I would agree with that observation. Um, let's change to topics a little bit. Let's talk about Stratford Chef School specifically, um, but where you see the value um, in people undertaking a formal uh, education in the culinary arts or as a sommelier or uh, with a focus on service uh, in front of house. Basically, how valuable do you see the role in formal training in relation to creating uh, impactful career opportunities? Ryan, do you want to start that? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, I've was sat on the board for six years and uh, I've, I've always been a champion of what the school does. I describe the school to other people as a, a master's class in culinary. I really feel like it's a career accelerator for one, but most people who attend the school have either like Simon, they've cooked for quite a long time, um, uh, or, or like Donna and myself, many other people on the panel, they've got a university education, and then they've come to culinary after that. I, I chose the school because I really like the condensed 16 week curriculum. I didn't have to slow down in my life, leave my apartment, find a home for my cats. I could keep all the things I was doing in my life and just sort of add this part of the school around it. And, um, you know, I think the hallmark of, of grads from the school is that they're very entrepreneurial. Uh, I think about Ruth Clausen who owns a cheese business and Dan and Kristen that own a fish business. There are uh, winery owners and restaurant owners and delivery company owners uh, and caterers. And that's, that's really the truth of it. Um, the education is incredibly unique. Um, not only do you learn how to cook, but you learn how to make a business plan, design concepts, uh, gastronomy statements, you learn food history. Um, and so, it, you know, it's a typical culinary education on steroids with a business education layered over top of that. And it's all done in half the time. Um, and, and in the style of like basically uh, the kind of camp you would go to when you're 15 years old. So uh, it's, inc it's incredibly tense. Um, but, but from that, um, you get people who are really dialed into what they want to do. Um, and so do you need to get a culinary education and go to the Stratford Chef School if what you hope to do is get a job in the culinary industry? Absolutely not. Uh, I'll tell you as someone who hires, there's lots of positions available and the pay is the same regardless. No one's going to pay you more for your education. Uh, if you want to build a business for yourself, the education is uh, is key and I, Stratford would be the best choice for that. Um, if what you hope to do is get into the culinary industry and accelerate really quickly, uh, I think the Stratford Chess School is sort of rocket fuel there, which is really nice. I'll, I'll say in our own kitchen, when we hire Stratford grads, everyone in our kitchen starts in the same spot. You get a tour, you get onboarded into the team, and you start at Garde Manger, and you make salads and shuck oysters. Uh, and everybody moves up through the kitchen and all the positions at a different rate based on their skill set. And uh, the Stratford grads move through the kitchen the fastest. They become sous chefs the fastest. Um and, and I think that's partly because of the education. Right. Anyone else want to chime in on uh, on that? Eric, how, how, what, about, what about you in that experience? Yeah, I, I found uh, you know, my, my education at Stratford Chef School really like, I had cooked for a, a few years before going into it. So it wasn't, I wasn't very green going in. But what I found like was really more in reflective years afterwards. Like I kind of finished Stratford Chef School and I just, jumped in abroad and kind of got into different Michelin star restaurants and stuff. And what I found was really, that really kind of helped me maybe just leapfrog a bit, uh, different other 
other cooks at the time that maybe had a bit more experience, uh, like actual cooking restaurant experience, were really, you know, there were situations that came up like one time our, our baker when I was working in Belgium got deported because her visa was up and suddenly I was baking and right. I really didn't have a history of that before. And then I was just like looking at the formulas that she had out there. I'm like, okay, DDT. And <laughs> going back to the difference, uh, pulling back on that Stratford Chef School training really kind of helped me accelerate my path through the kitchens that I were, found myself in. And then, yeah, just, you know, kind of echoing Ryan a bit, like, you know, as hiring as well too, it doesn't, it doesn't really change so much as far as like, you know, kind of getting in, getting your foot in the door into a restaurant. But really once you're in that kitchen, uh, I found like, yeah, Stratford Chef School uh, really helped the students that come out from there really are goal oriented, uh, you know, can uh, set goals, achieve them and kind of move themselves through the, the kitchen, you know, a lot faster. And that, you know, that also speaks to my own kind of history with Stratford Chef School. All right, Carrie, you have uh, gone through the program. You've uh, worked as a professional chef, and then you used that to move into uh, the world of wine and become a sommelier. H how did one inform the other? Well, um, when I first went to chef school, I really, really fell in love with wine. I had a, a gateway. My gateway wine was an Alsatian Riesling. And in wine, I think it was the first year wine class. And from that, I think basically just taking both classes in wine um, in first and second year, realizing like I, I'm a graduate from 2004. So it's been a really long time since I've been out of school, but I'm still in the industry. Um, but there wasn't a ton of wine education available outside of the education at school. So I had to really search for that. Um, and I remember when Amanda started taking classes in Toronto and she's traveling back and forth that I knew when I moved to Toronto, that was the first thing I was going to do was seek out some wine education. And it was just more readily available here in Toronto. So uh, WSET, ISG, all of that um, kind of opened my world. And all of my training, my classical training and, and learning about menus and gastronomy and cuisines of the world really kind of depend on that experience with front of house. And so I think my natural path was moving from back of house into front of house, um, but I still kept cooking as a job. So whether it was uh, teaching and running a cooking school and then eventually into um, basically right now, I currently work as a recipe developer, uh, research and development at Loblaws and their test kitchen. And it's all about following food and, and beverage trends. So I'm kind of up to date all the time with that. And at the same time, over the last eight years, I've really just expanded my wine education. So um, it still goes hand in hand. I still, I'm saw me now at a restaurant. So I'm kind of all over the place. I've, I've done a little bit of everything. That's yeah, great. It's allowed you to do a little bit of everything, which I think is kind of something that we're trying to explore here, you know, for people who are sort of like, where, where can I go here? Um, and I think we've had a lot of stories that, that talk about that. We've heard compelling career stories today. Um, I think it's been inspiring. I hope it's been inspiring to people who have been listening and our viewers. Um, I guess this is kind of a multi-layered question, so I hope I'm being kind of clear about it. But um, we've taken away some of the possibilities that classical training could have. Um, can you speak a little bit to the Stratford Chess School and how it has led to success in your careers? Now, even if you didn't attend, um, how maybe you've had relationships develop with alumni or you've had opportunities that have presented themselves as a direct result of being uh, associated with the school. Um, I know, Amanda, you ended up, I believe, in France as a direct result of your time here. Do you want to talk about that story a little bit and then, and then move around the group? Every, everybody could have a, a, a chance sort of maybe talking about that. Definitely. So I was, um, I was a service instructor at Stratford Chef School um, by way of working at Patso at the time. And so that kind of, um, you know, part of the, the love and charm of the Stratford Chef School is the connections that you make. I mean, specifically everyone on this call. Um, but in addition to that, I was introduced with a um, it's now two star Michelin chef in France. And had I had not worked closely with him doing service, doing the labs, this guest chef and his maitre d', I wouldn't have had the opportunity to go and work in France for them. And so that was, you know, my first, like, had I have not done that, I guarantee you I wouldn't be in Toronto right now um, because I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have left Stratford. So, you know, 
uh, it's it's the networking that you make, the relationships, the again, the intimacy, being able to work so closely amongst such caliber of individuals from all over the world has like led to immense opportunity for me. Uh, and I did not graduate this school. I didn't go attend the school, but just by working beside these great people. Great. Brandy, do you want to talk about, I know you have an extra special experience because you're here all the time and you kind of are the Stratford Chef School in, in many, many ways, but uh, just that opportunity and so many people that you've met and so many people that you bring into the school as well uh, as guest chefs and, uh, and the influence. Can you speak a little bit about it? Uh, I think what I want to speak to is we, the school is a week away from welcoming all of our guest chefs for the final quarter of the year. Uh, so we have a different guest chef every night uh, presenting a, me a menu of their own, working and mentoring our current students to serve the public. And my very, very favorite thing is when alumni and former students get to come back as guest chefs. First of all, it's just a pleasure to see our curriculum just out in the wild uh, taking shape and also just to have former students and to have alumni come back and be able to mentor our current students and to keep building and developing that network. And our students are doing a lot. There are so many different ways of being a chef in this industry or being in this industry. And it's really, really a pleasure and a gift to get to have our former students coming back and just role modeling a lot of different ways of being in this industry. Not everybody goes on to work in a restaurant. Some people are caterers or they've got pantries or they're doing community outreach or activism. And that's the, for me, that's the best part of the opportunity that the chef school um, offers. Just building that connection and building that community. And this is, you know, year after year after year of graduating classes. Great. Yeah. Amazing. Eric, do you want to, do you have anything you want to talk about about that? Yeah. With, you know, for Stratford Chef School, one big thing that was, uh, for me was, I, I was pretty lucky in my year, we had uh, Ricardo Caminini be the chef instructor, but really that was something that kind of, you know, I, I, Amanda knew me when I was younger as well too, and same time, and I, it humbled me, which I very much needed at that time, uh, because it's, uh, you know, there, I was looking at this, the chef that you know someone who i want to be and there's so many chef instructors still at stratford chef school that really can emulate that it's like when you're a graduating student you're like i'm not that person i don't have that skill set and really you know it kind of highlighted the work that i had to do to kind of get there and um but also with a very tangible goal uh you know and just being in working alongside them learning from the uh, chef instructors at the, the school is just was you know, it just it just made it for me like you know as soon as i walked through that door afterwards i kind of knew what i wanted to go and where i wanted to go and uh you know they were very helpful in that sense of just kind of being exposed at such a close you know proximity to so many very talented people that have actually accomplished something and kind of gone on to meet their goals within their careers was very like the most valuable for me in stratford Center school and then also just you know stratford as a city just it's you're just immersed in this like very rich food culture for such a small town as well too. There's so many different you know, things that I was exposed to. I'm, I'm just from Brantford down the road, so we really don't have that rich food culture at all. So it, it was very nice to be like, oh yeah, this is you know, good quality coffee. This is a, a delicious croissant. This is, you know, whatever else at cheese and, you know, uh, charcuterie where like, you know, I really didn't have that prior to Stratford Chef School. And it was kind of a nice base point to then, you know, reference point even to kind of go on from there. And, you know, anyone that you talk to around the community is so, you know, bought in as well, too, to that kind of food being a very big part of their lifestyle, not this kind of afterthought sustenance, you know? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Big food culture here. Uh, anybody else want to chime in on any of that before we get to some questions? Actually, Jeff, sure. I'd love oh. to chime in on that. Yeah, if great, I, Jordan. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, Carrie. Um, I am, uh, like Amanda, not a graduate of the chef school either, um, but I think the chef school in a roundabout way put me to where I am also, even though I didn't go there. I think, uh, like Eric just said, if you've, for those of you who have not been to Stratford, it's 
the chef school is such an integral part of this whole community. Um, you find chef school grads at almost every restaurant in Stratford, um, working, whether it's front of house, back of house, whatever they're doing. Um, and it's, it's kind of, once you get into that world in hospitality within the city, it's, it's infectious. It's like, it's impossible to not, um, jump into it or, or get involved, uh, to a fuller extent. And that kind of set me on the path to, to where I am now, even though I didn't go to the school, it's, it's, it's the culture of the, of the whole city. And I think that the chef school is sort of the heartbeat of that whole, that whole scene in Stratford. Like we're really spoiled um, here in Stratford. I've, I'm born and raised. I still live here. Um, and I think that I'm just a product of my environment and being, being in this industry in Stratford is, is kind of pushes the envelope um, and as 100% put me to where I am today. Amazing. Carrie. You want to, do you want to yeah, have it? I'll yeah. just do quickly, just so that I know you have to get onto other things. But I think what's really, really unique about Stratford and the Chef School is well, one thing we haven't really talked about today is all the amazing relationships that the school builds with farmers, different purveyors of food that go on to all these graduates. They still work with those and, and develop those relationships. It's not, um, you know, a large, um, company you know I'm not going to name any names but you know to get in food everything's from scratch or or they're they're like looking for the best products possible and I think that that's a, a very unique part of Dr. Chef School and I love that amazing yeah just sorry touch on that area as well too just in the first day that I was there I remember we went out to Anthony John's farm and uh, we were pulling up leaks after the frost and it was just like to me that was you know just like ah Okay, I get this a little bit more now. And it was just like, as soon as you know that door opens, you start going down a lot more. And really that that's the first day, or at least I don't know if that's still the curriculum, Randy, sorry. But, uh, you know, back then it was, uh, you really like, it kind of sets the tone that like, yeah, like product, you know, the sourcing, the everything, you know, and kind of can go from there. And, you know, that's where you kind of build your, you know, the foundation on your restaurant or, or hospitality career, you know. Absolutely. Uh, I think we should get some questions here. Uh, just while we're still we're still here, I've got. Uh, well, where are we here? Open answered. Uh, oh, oh, you're answering them on the on the chat. Okay, that's good. Okay, uh, let me. To, sorry, I'm a, I'm a novice at the other at the negotiating the whole the whole thing. Uh, I have two questions I'm happy to read here and, and throw to a panelist if anyone feels confident answering. Uh, so the first would be, how long is a usual school day? Randy, you might be best uh, to kind of outline what a typical school day would look like for prospective students. Uh, you just need to unmike, Randy. Uh, it depends on the day, but it is not a short day. Uh, level one students typically have practical cookery in the morning and theory classes in the afternoon. And then in the evening, um, twice a week, they, twice a week the level one students are on dinner service. So when our dining room is open, the level two students part, or the level one students participate in dinner labs by running food and learning how to work in a dining room or they're washing dishes and getting to learn from the cuisine that's happening in the kitchen. So, the day may be from 8.15 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night, but it may be from 8.15 in the morning until 5 o'clock. So it depends on the day, but it is not a short day. It, we pack a lot into that time. A lot the of school that year, okay. Sorry, the, the school year is condensed as well. So I, I was kind of speak to it a little bit offsetting. It, it doesn't begin till kind of the third week of October generally. It goes into maybe the second week of March. But so there are advantages. You can work a bit longer uh, on the shoulder seasons or beginning a, a after that. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very condensed package, but um, it, it's, it's not as typically long as a, a community college schedule or, or a year. We have two other really interesting uh, points to maybe launch off of. So first, or I guess there's three here. It's amazing. Thanks so much for chatting in. Um, so if we can speak to focusing on select types of cuisine and really what the benefit is to perhaps, you know, the Stratford Chef curriculum exploring a really wide variety of, you know, different types of food and types of cooking. That might be you too, Randy. <laughs> um, 
I, our curriculum is the, our, our curriculum is rooted in uh, French culinary tradition. And we certainly explore a number of other cuisines, but it's the French tradition that really informs sort of the basis of our technique. And I think the strength of that perspective is that you get to learn to do really a lot of stuff in those short 16, in that short 16 week uh, year. So we do 16 weeks in level one and 16 weeks in level two. And in that level one curriculum, something that's unique about the way we set out that curriculum is that it's organized around methods. So where, whereas if you go to a different school, maybe one week you're learning about fish and one, one week you're learning about meat and the next week you're learning about vegetables. In our curriculum, in week one, you learn about boiling and you learn how to boil meat and fish and vegetables and grains and all of these different things. And then week two, you learn about poaching, which is a refinement of boiling and you go through all of the ingredients. And so it's a really, our curriculum is really methodical. And what you end up with at the end of those 16 weeks is a very broad competence in a lot of different kinds of things, even though our curriculum is rooted in the French culinary tradition. I think we've got well too. I think um, really a big difference there as well too is what I find you know as I got into my career a bit more is that although they're kind of like a little express uh, or Reader's Digest version of the of the cuisine, it's it really exposes you to a lot more than you would get just straight workplace experience. Where you know unless you're working in a restaurant that has you know 10, 12 different cuisines on the menu at any given time, plus an expert in that field. Uh, teaching you, you're not really going to get that exposure, even if it is quick and, and you know, only one lab or whatever is very much a, a way to kind of see a lot more while going through the Stratford Chef School, although a lot is rooted in French culinary techniques, but, you know, I still sharpen my knives the way that Hashimoto showed us when we were at, uh, when he came in and uh, taught at, for a lab at, in, uh, in class as well as, you know, a couple other things that are just like kind of like those flavor reference points that come from those, uh, those different labs from different cuisines as well, too, that you kind of, you know, fall back to throughout your career and, and you have that exposure to from when attending Stratford Chef School. There's one question here that uh, I think might be the last one because I'll, I'll, I'll I can address some of these um, just technically, uh, and we're, we've we've uh, uh, had a long uh, discussion today, and it's been amazing. Um, Eric, you've answered it on the Q and A, but I think I want to put it out there because it sort of speaks to Mel and what he was talking to, and to Donna, and to everybody's kind of career story. It says, uh, "Question is this: It's always been a dream to go into the culinary industry. I currently have a successful career not in the industry. What is your advice for taking the risk, even if?" things are going well in my other career? Um, I think that's a great question. I think Mel's a, a walking statement to that. Um, it, it really is, uh, I think if you're successful in your current career, it certainly means that you can be sex successful in any career. Um, and then it becomes more of a question of, um, are you passionate about it? Is it something you always want to explore? Are you interested in it, something that's creative? Maybe your current career is not. Um, but, you know, as kind of Mel said and Donna said, you, you just kind of move into it and you just keep moving forward and, and you won't, uh, you, you will succeed at it if that's your, if that's the approach and you've already been successful in something else. Uh, would you agree with that panelist, do you think? Uh, I think that um, what I can say on that subject is that the good thing about the chef school is that it gives you this completely realistic view of what it's like to work in a in a commercial kitchen in a real restaurant both front and back of the house because you are actually working in a restaurant every day um, so if you're questioning and you think your passion is food and you want to explore that the chef school is the perfect place to do it because that will give you that sort of real real world feeling of what you're doing or what you're going to be doing you know and it certainly did that for me and Ryan, you sort of spoke to it well, I think you said, you know, I didn't have to give up my entire life. It was 16 weeks. I knew I could condense that experience and still keep my apartment and my cats and my, you know, my regular life. Yeah, things put, you maybe pushed pause, uh, but it, 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 it didn't eat up, a, 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 you know, the majority of a year. And I think there's, that's, I think that's valuable uh, in knowing as well. Uh, you just want to unmute, I think. Yes, I have an example. Sorry, yeah. 
too. There's yeah. lots of MBA programs there that, you know, if you apply to do your MBA, the, the joy of it is that you don't have to leave your life behind. You can do that at the same time and accelerate your career. So those options are there. That question has been asked many times of me in my six years on the board by potential candidates over the last few years. And it's a really, really good one. People who are, um, you know, in their 30s or 40s and have a really well-established career and are considering transitioning to Cullery. And I think the question you have to ask is, how is it that you define that that's a successful career? Um, if you make six figures, have health care, three weeks off and a pension, and that's how you define success, you'll be really hard pressed to find that in the culinary world. Just straight up, I'll tell you that. That's the brass tacks. Doesn't matter if you go to Stratford. There just aren't a lot of those jobs out there. Um, if if what you define success as is something that you really enjoy and that's what you get to do every day. And when you get home, you're like, wow, somebody paid me to do what I love doing. That's that's certainly you're gonna have that in spades. And there's loads of jobs out there. And Stratford's gonna help you find a really, really great one. Um, but you know, there there are students I've talked to in the past, potential candidates who have great jobs in in fintech or in finance, or they're you know they're coders and they're debating whether they should get into the culinary world. And you really do have to ask what you want and what's important for you, because um, the days are long, uh, and the pay the pay is is difficult for sure. Um, but those things are always improving. So um, you know, the industry always wants and needs really good creative people. Um, so, you know, that's worth considering also. Uh, is Donna still there? There, you you were sort of, I didn't you, I didn't mean to cut you off, Donna. Maybe we'll give you the last word. Um, there are a lot of people that I've met through this school and even here in this call who have different careers and like Mel, I, I swear there are four Mel Athalakman Valleys on the planet, but we only ever see one at a time. He does a million things. And like Jess Iveson is a practicing lawyer still. And she went to school and she is brilliant and she got lots of great things out of it. And I remember before I started school, I asked Bob, um, what is an example of a non-chef career that shifted based on going to this school? Or like, what could you do with it? And he gave me the example of a kitchen contractor or a general contractor who became a Red Seal chef through this program. And then that made him an extra valuable contractor for kitchens. And he had this insight that he could apply. So I don't think like dabbling into this culinary schooling or career is permanent. It can just impact what you're doing moving forward. And if you're interested in it, you're interested in it. It doesn't go away. And you are reminded of it every time you eat, which is three times a day or more. Um, and like everybody on the planet is into it in some way or another. So if you, like your interest is not going to go away. Um, I think it still makes sense if you're in a successful career to still have something on the side. Like I have another side business that I only get to really deal with maybe once a month, but I have like all the labor costs and food costs and packaging figured out in a way that I learned from school. Um, you don't need to be permanently in or out. It's not like a full shift uh, one way or the other. You could still get into it and use it someday. Great final word, Donna, thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. I really appreciate your time, all your insights, uh, your help here with putting together uh, the webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank just very quickly uh, Clara for her tech expertise, uh, Jennifer Otterlini, uh, who is our head of admin. Uh, she did a lot to put this together. I'd like to thank Sonia, Jan, and Carolyn at Collective Motion for putting this whole thing in motion. Uh, if we've had an impact on you viewers and you have any further questions, uh, anything at all about the program, I'm going to put a, an email together with the answer to some of those questions. I saw one about apprenticeships. I'm happy to answer that and send that out. Um, if you have anything else um, that you want to ask, you're, you're, you're very free to email me at admissions at stratfordchef.com. Please email Jennifer Otterlini, who's the head of administration uh, at admin at stratfordchef.com. Uh, visit us at uh, stratfordchef.com, the website. Google us, call us. We're here to help launch your exciting, creative, entrepreneurial careers in the culinary arts uh, in beautiful downtown Stratford, Ontario. Uh, we're going to leave here where we began today with uh, the video showcasing just how special the art and artistic um, uh, Stratford is and what a compliment the Stratford Chef School is to the rich culinary history of this community. Uh, take care. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you again.
Thanks, everybody. Bye.